Hi, I would like to talk about scam tokens. Hi, my name is Alexey Konosevich, and you're watching Blockchain State. First of all, what is a token? It's a record in an electronic ledger. Normally, when people say tokens, they refer to records that users can arbitrarily create themselves on blockchain, own and control them through private keys. And it's different from cryptocurrency. Some say cryptocurrency is also a kind of token, and I couldn't agree more, but cryptocurrency is a native basic token of a blockchain network. Therefore, let's distinguish cryptocurrency from any other crypto tokens. The main difference is that cryptocurrency cannot be created at a click of a finger by a user. It's mined. You must compete with other miners to create it. Cryptocurrency represents no property rights or legal rights. No values are backed to cryptocurrency except its own intrinsic value. Some people say that cryptocurrency has no value itself and it's not correct. In this video, I explained what consumer value cryptocurrency has. Another specific thing about cryptocurrency is that it cannot have one ultimate issuer or owner. Nobody owns a Bitcoin network, for example, and there is no controlling person or entity behind it. Many people own Bitcoins and miners equally compete to create Bitcoins. So when you read the news that some company is going to create their own cryptocurrency, it can be a scam or just inaccurate information. Of course, a company can launch a cryptocurrency. Still, it cannot own cryptocurrency as it becomes a free floating system with no owner or controlling entity once it's created. It will represent no value besides the value that cryptocurrency has itself. For example, if a company produces rubber ducks and they are going to create a cryptocurrency that will represent their business, it's nonsense. Cryptocurrency is a value itself and cannot mediate another value. Or this information is inaccurate, misleading, and they are going to create crypto tokens instead. Tokens. A blockchain network became the basis for user-created tokens and that decentralized applications. So tokens are the second layer above cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency, in fact, ensures the existence and functioning of crypto tokens, smart contracts, and dApps. You have to spend cryptocurrency to create tokens and pay your cryptocurrency as network fees for transferring tokens. Tokens can be created above the Bitcoin network using some specific protocols such as Color Coins and Omni protocol. Tokens on Ethereum are created within sophisticated programs called smart contracts. Tokens can be created in almost all so-called blockchain platforms, which are blockchain networks of the second generation. The token itself is a record in the ledger, a unit of account. It's incorrect to ask what the true nature of the token is. Is it a security or utility or something else? It's neither of these until its creator specifies what it is. And to figure out if the token has any value and whether it is a scam, we need to analyze its legal nature. Utility tokens. What is a utility token? It's simple. Have you ever played video games on slot machines? To start a game, you need a token. First, you buy the token and insert it in the slot. So, token is a store of value and it has a specific function, a utility. It can be converted into a session of a video game. Another example is a gift certificate. You buy the certificate in a store and pay, say, $100 and receive the certificate that represents the value of 
products that can be obtained on this amount of dollars in this store. So the utility token on the blockchain is the same, but in digital form. The distinguishing feature is that it is limited to some specific service or product provided by a seller or a producer. The token holder should be able to exchange this token for the product or service of that token issuer. Security tokens. The second large group of tokens is security tokens. Security tokens are meant to represent securities, such as bonds, stocks, bills of exchange, derivatives, and so on. And there are two ways how it can generally work. First is the token that directly represents the rights. In this case, the token is the security itself. The second is the token that is pegged with security, such as a, a stock or a bond. While the security has its own legal form, say stocks in paper form, in this case, the token is not the actual right. The token in this case can be a promise of the one who holds the stock to transfer it to the token holder when some conditions are met. Or the token has some rights to the token holder, for example, voting decision-making rights. So the main condition that helps us to distinguish a scam token is whether it is backed to any value or has any legal rights behind it. There are two main types of securities. These are shares or stocks that certify corporate rights, that is a share in the ownership of the company, and debt securities such as bonds and bills of exchange. In both cases, the holder of the securities has some legal rights, which means that it creates obligations to the one who issued them or accepted them. For example, the one who accepted the debt that arises from a bill of exchange. Scam tokens will lack all this legal superstructure. Bonds, bills, and any other debt certifying securities can be presented for redemption. You can get cash for it in its face value, the value that is written in a security. While scam tokens cannot be exchanged for anything, meaning that no one is obliged to accept the crypto token and give you anything in exchange. Even if a token is traded on the free market, it doesn't mean that it can always be exchanged for cash. Bonds and bills also can be traded on the market, but it's not the same as scam tokens are traded only based on pure demand and supply. You can sell them until someone wants to buy them. But if no one wants to buy it, you can enforce it. With debt securities such as bonds, you can always exchange it for cash when the time comes. If the bond issuer doesn't accept the bond back, you go to court as you have legal rights. The bond issuer is the borrower that must return its debt with interest to anyone who returns this security. With stocks and company shares, it's a bit different. There is no debtor, but this document represents a share in the company and is backed with some rights, such as the right to vote, and make business decisions, get dividends, and also get a respective income if the company is liquidated and its property is sold. So as you see in this case, there are also obligations on the other end. Someone owns you something. This is the nature of the security. There are several questions that you can ask to check if a project is a scam. Do crypto tokens certify property rights or any other legal rights? The token can be packed to some assets, money, for example, or property, mobile or immovable. For example, if you buy stable coins and then you may convert them back to cash, 
that is your legal right. It's not a scam. In terms of real estate, it's not as simple because deals with land and buildings in many countries require a specific legal form to become valid. It can be a requirement of registration, notarization, and so on. The same issue is with vehicles, vessels, aircraft, weapons, drugs, and so on. That's why normally tokens cannot directly represent these rights. More likely, such token will be void. But before you make any decision, you may want to get legal advice. The second indication will be the presence of a responsible person or entity, someone who takes obligations. If this is a company, you need to check its registration. When the company issues an investment token, it might be obliged to get authorization from an official body, such as a Security and Exchange Commission. It's different from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So seek legal advice for it. The next thing, when you identify the responsible entity, you may want to check the legal connection of the claimed right to this entity, or simply put whether this entity owns what it claims. If the token issuer promises a share in the flock of sheep, ask for proof that this issuer owns the sheep. If the issuer promises future benefits, say a share in a fish catch, it will be reasonable to ask if the fisherman has nets and a boat and has got a fishing license. If your promises are backed with real assets and legal rights and authorizations, the more risks you get. Of course, if the fisherman doesn't have a net, it doesn't mean it is a scam. He actually might seek investment to buy a new net a businessman may have sincere and good faith, but the pure legal backup will mean more risks and your investment will rely on pure belief in the luck of such a venture. And finally, all said must be proven with valid legal documents. If you don't see them, consider it a scam. This simple rule will let you save your investment. Thank you. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. See you in the next video.